folks and welcome to this week's Hi-Fi News Etc. And before we go any further, trivia. Now, as I make this video, we're on the last stretch to Christmas and Christmas is full of parties and lots of get-togethers. So I thought I would do at least a couple of videos based on hospitality. And our first question is thus, the Eagles, Wilco, The Doors, and The Grateful Dead all made albums with the word hotel in them. However, only one of them was a real hotel. Which one? Again, The Eagles, Wilco, The Doors, and Grateful Dead all made albums with the word hotel in them. However, only one of them was a real hotel. Which one? So there's one to think about, hey. Anyway, I will tell you the answer to this question at the end of the video. In the meantime, Hi-Fi News. And we're going to begin with speakers and Dolly, who I don't think have ever appeared in Hi-Fi News etc. So welcome Dolly, making your debut. And we're looking at the Dolly Phantom M675. This range is an in-wall speaker featuring eight drive units, all developed in-house. This one is equipped with two SMC-based 7-inch bass and mid-range drivers and four 7-inch passive radiators. The M675 base and mid-range drivers feature the so-called SMC technology. This is Dali's own technology that aims to minimize distortion and more in the heart of the magnet system. The M675 features the company's own hybrid tweeter module, which consists of a 28mm soft dome tweeter and a ribbon tweeter working together. It can also be rotated for optimum horizontal dispersion when used as a center channel mounted horizontally below or above a typical TV screen. The speaker is ready for mounting out of the box with no additional accessories needed. Magnetic grills are included in the box and are fully paintable. The price is 2100 and 99 pounds. And before I go on, let me remind you, as per usual, I will place contact details in the description. Next up, we have a new one from Blue Sound. And we're talking about Blue Sound's Pulse M, a new omni hybrid TM wireless music streaming speaker. The design is composed of an angled up firing five and a quarter mid bass unit and two three quarter inch tweeters mounted and offset at 45 degrees from each other. A custom designed acoustic reflector above the mid bass unit diffuses unwanted sonic artifacts while directing the driver's higher frequencies out and away from the speaker. This creates a 360 degree soundstage. The music, well, that's pushed out by an 80 watt amplifier. And the speaker itself, well, that measures 8 inches high and nearly 6 inches deep and also around 7 inches wide. There's an optional wall mount accessory priced at £89, and you can also buy an adjustable floor stand. That one is called the FS230, priced at £159. Arriving in satin black or white, the Pulse M includes built-in access to over 20 natively integrated music services, controlled directly from the Blue OS controller app. You can even use Pulse M's as rear surrounds in a Blue Sound home theatre group. If you want to buy yourself a Pulse M, well, I have a range of prices for you, and they are either £449 
or 449 US dollars or 549 euros. Finally, for this week's news, we have a UK company called, and I'm going to pronounce them Cleo, because I think that name is ancient Greek in its origin. Although, of course, I'm probably wrong. I just have a feeling. Anyway, maybe the company can confirm or otherwise. There are two amplification products for you this time around. First up is the K105 preamplifier, and that uses relay switching throughout and apparently short signal paths. The K105 is assembled by hand at the dedicated manufacturing facility in Kent in England. Multiple inputs include four sets of RCA inputs, two sets of balanced inputs, and a three and a half millimeter connection. A selection of line level outputs are also provided, one set of which is balanced. You get a dual action volume control as well. The preamplifier can be switched on and off by pressing the volume control inwards. The box itself spans 100 mm by 405 by 380 mm and weighs in at 9.5 kilograms. Price is £3,895. Cleo also offer the K135. This is an integrated amplifier and the company's first. Again, based on relay switching and using the same dual action volume control, the K135 uses three sets of outputs plus multiple inputs, including two sets of balanced inputs and a three and a half millimeter connection. There's a class D power amplifier inside and that provides two by 65 watts at eight ohms. Price for this one, 4,195 pounds. Next up, viewer questions. a couple for you this time around, partly because our first question requires a slightly longer answer than normal. So let's turn to that first question, and that arrives from a young lady called Barlow's XXX. Hello, Barlow's XXX. And Barlow's XXX says, I'm looking to buy my first turntable. Congratulations, I have to say. And I've been doing loads of research. Good, glad to hear that. Have found your videos very helpful. Now oh, shucks. I think I'm leaning towards the AT LP3XBT, as I still live at home, so need the Bluetooth for my headphones when everyone is home, and think I would prefer having an automatic turntable as a beginner, which is fair enough. Do you think this is a good choice? And Barlow's XXX did tell me she has £400 as a budget, but she also needs speakers. Right, well, I'm still lacking a little bit of information here, so I'm going to infer a little bit. For example, I don't know if you own an amplifier, but I assume you don't. So you're going to need a turntable, you will need a phono amplifier, which connects the turntable to your main amplifier. You'll also need that main amplifier, and a pair of speakers, and some cables if required. And you have a budget of £400, which is a little bit of a challenge, but let's see. Now, I also see this kind of setup as a sort of, let's get you up and running. We can talk about the finer points of sound quality another time kind of system. That is, we want to get you started listening to your music ASAP. So, here's a few thoughts. If you do go for the LP3XBT, then that will give you the Bluetooth you need, as you know. And as you also know, it will also give you a built-in phono amplifier. So 
that's sorted then. In terms of your amplifier and your speakers, well, I would combine the pair of them. I would have powered speakers, which puts an amplifier inside a pair of speakers. So they are, in effect, all-in-ones. Now, if you buy all of this kit from someone like Amazon, the turntable is going to cost you about £280, I would say, which leaves you with £120 to finish everything off. In that case, I would turn to a company called Edifier, and they have a pair of speakers called the R1280DBs, which retail for £130, which is a tad over your budget. In terms of cabling, well, I think you should get everything out of the box that you need. But for some reason, if you do need extras, go back onto Amazon, grab some cables from a company called QED, and you'll be sorted. If you are confused at all about the cabling or any other aspect of anything else I've talked about, get back in touch with me. I'll do my very best. To finish off a viewer questions, we have a question from Pitterloaf1, a name that sounds strangely appetizing. And Pitterloaf1 says, Hi Paul, hi Pitterloaf1, love the detailed reviews. Well, thank you very much. I have recently passed my project Elemental Turntable, that is, onto my son. Well, lucky old son. I've been looking at the Riga Planner 1 or Project W Carbon Evo. I do love the Roy, I think that's Roy Gandhi, engineered approach. Roy Gandhi from Riga. On the other hand, your review of the project and its ability to be as good as the P3 has me torn between the two. Pitterloaf1 has obviously been watching my recently published Top 10 Affordable Turntables video, where I talked about the Evo from Project and also the Riga Planner 3. And to finish off his question, he says, anything that would clinch one over the other for you personally? So which one to pick? Hey, well, okay, to answer your question, allow me to partly repeat what I said in the video. And that is, I prefer the Planner 3's mid-range performance. So go for that if mid-range detail is where your music at in terms of your ears. I do prefer the Evo's bass performance though, and how the mids interact with the bass, how they blend. As I say, the Evo, in my opinion, has a better overall tonal balance. So again, if your musical preference leans towards the overall picture, then go for the Evo. Finally, if you're looking for value for money and who isn't these days, then I would still go for the Evo because it's immensely upgradable. That is, you can push the Evo up and over the 1K limit, exceeding the Planner 3 in all areas eventually after a series of relatively low cost upgrades. So again, it depends if and how you wish to upgrade. If cash is tight, then the small but frequent Evo upgrades is the way to go. And that's the viewers' questions. Finally, let's go for a hint and tip, and then we'll talk trivia answers. Now, this week's tip doesn't come from me. It comes from George. I've bought one of these lamps, said George, at Aldi yesterday for £14.99. Let me show you what George is talking about here. I have mine attached to the isolation base under my turntable. There's three brightness levels as well. I thought that this may be of interest to your viewers. Best regards, George. George, thank you very much indeed. It's a great tip. And you know what? I reckon there'll be many people out there who are interested, especially if they have access to a little supermarket. Now, lamps like this are very useful around your hi-fi, especially if you listen in low light and you want to see what on earth you're up to when you put a record on. So, nice one, George. And can I put out a call? If you have any recommendations in terms of products or if you've seen a bit of a snazzy deal, or if you have any hi-fi related hints and tips, I've been given a few of mine over the past several weeks now. 
well, I'd love to hear yours. So by all means, get in touch. Please let me know and I'll pass on the good word. Now, before we end, let's talk about that trivia question and let's give you an answer. And the question said, the Eagles, Wilco, The Doors and Grateful Dead all made albums with the word hotel in them. However, only one of them was a real hotel. Which one? And the answer is the Morrison Hotel. The front cover picture of Morrison Hotel, the 1970 album by The Doors, was taken in an actual cheap rooming house of that name in downtown Los Angeles. The Eagles Hotel California and The Grateful Dead's From the Mars Hotel were both fictions. Wilco's Yankee Hotel Foxtrot was based on a radio call sign. So now you know. And that's it folks, thank you very much for staying to the end of this video and if I could ask you once more, as I normally do, if you could reach below there and click on the subscribe and like buttons, I'll be cock a hoop, I really will. I'm very happy, a big smile on my face. So your help is appreciated, thank you. Also, if you want to go further down into the description, you can click on links to my website, my Facebook group and also my Patreon page, which is now a hub. Everything I do turns off on Patreon. There's also exclusives on Patreon. I'll be back on Monday for something hi-fi related, so I hope to have your company then. Until that time, folks, bye-bye for now.